years ago, my father had gone away to Marka, right? And me and my mother had to milk the cows in the evening. And my mother was milking a cow just here, and I was milking one next to her. And my cow kicked, right? And I was sat on a little stool. You know, you sat here, don't forget this is a fairly deep gutter, you sat here on a stool with a bucket between your knees milking a cow. My cow kicked, I fell back under mother's cow, her cow kicked. And we both ended up in the gutter here, milk all over, in the shit, and poor old mum was in tears and so was I, and we just sat there and laughed, it's, well, you know, we wouldn't hurt, but what a mess, we were stinking in milk, we were stinking in cow shit, and we just laughed, and, and you know, I'll always remember that spot, but see, my boys won't never have that, they'll never remember things like yeah. that, because they were on a quad bike, they were on a they haven't got time for each other now. They haven't, they don't they don't need to work together like they used to. The families didn't tightly knit as they were years ago because the mother's speed of life. I mean my my mum and dad had an old converted lorry that they had to go. They never had a car. I mean you never have travelled anywhere. I mean they go to Tavistock once a week. That was a big, big, big relief one to go there once a week. No television. I can remember when we first saw Electric. Their first television. No, it would have been 1959, 1960. We had a generator. And then when he was born in 1970, we were born in 1971, Bridget said, We can't have a baby here with a generator because in the night it wouldn't start if a baby crying. It, it used to be a star automatic where you switch a light on and the generator would start up and then that, you know, we time take about a minute for the cutting before the light would come on. Well, I mean, that was no good. So we paid £6,000 back then to have a, the mains electric brought up across the fields. That was a lot of money back then. Well, I mean, you had a deep freeze because you couldn't run a deep freeze on a generator because he kept cutting in and out. But, you know, when I say to the boys, some of the things that happen, you know, they laugh at you. Know, it's bloody old thing, you know. Wonderful. So these building up a lot of memories for me, really. And do you know what? Several years ago, I hung them bloody bags up on that ceiling. I don't know what's in them. <laughs> it's a bit of an Aladdin's cave, really. Everything gets put in here, and then sometimes you use it. And most of the time, you fall over it. See, years ago, but I mean, I can't remember. All these, this building here, it used to be split up into little buildings. Because if you look outside here. What I've thought about time stream, what I would love to do is make this into a restaurant. That into reception, come dance or come reception for weddings. And have that as the cookhouse side. But if you kept the old character, you see with the big doors and that. And once it's done up really nice, and people would come for miles for, you know, if you've done a really good job. <coughs> Here was the old place where we used to tip the carts out in the yard and tip all the mangoes in here that we used to grow for the winter feed. And me and my sister, one of our jobs in the, in the autumn was to come over here and take all the mangoes from here, throw it back in that corner and build a wall of mangoes. It's, it's a bit like a turnip, a lot of swede, you know. And then what we do, we used, I'll show you out the front, we had a thing, we used to pulp them up for the cattle. We used to keep all the young cattle in here tied up in this chipper because that's what all these stones are for. Along here was the troughs and then they used to stand on that middle piece and you see it slopes away and that was the old dung passage behind. So we, it used to be a hell of a warm building in here. Yeah. You could come in here in the winter and you'd have like 25 cattle, 30 cattle here tied up and they'd all be looking at you and uh, you'd go down through and You'd be up for turning your, the old mango, then, it? And you'd be bringing down, feeding them with turnips. And then over here is the old is the barn where we used to have the hay. And we used to go up and throw down the bales and then feed to the cattle. But I mean, it's just so unprofitable now, you couldn't do it. It's too time consuming. I mean, now we, we've got a house up the top there. We can put a hundred cattle in and we can feed them in five minutes. This year, you'd be taking two hours to feed 25. So that's where farmers got to. Come with me. 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 Come with
Ну, да, It's a double floor. The reason for that was, in the olden days, they used to bring the sheaves of corn in the earth stack. Then they would smash them. When they used to beat it with sticks. You see this? You see this lip here? And this, there's another lip this side. But when they were beating the corn, that would stop the corn from patch. Going over and losing it so it didn't go down to the floor. Sit down you dogs. And you see they had the big doors so the wind would blow the chaff. But they also would bring in loose hay and put over there. This hay is too, this is too modern. Yeah. You're talking about the horse and cart. Uh -huh. And sweeps and hay poles and... So how long ago did that stop? Oh God. About 1950. Huh. I was born in 47 before Dad had his first bailer. He would have had his baler about 55. It wasn't a square baler like this, it was it was very soft bales. Mm. And then we bought a square baler like I mean this is a big invention for us women because you stack so much more so you're squeezed in so tight. So that's where farmers got to.